Hi, twangers. Twangabunga, twangers. Or should I just say twangabunga at the end? It's a very important question. Nevertheless, let's talk reverb. This is my reverb unit. It's a clone of the original Fender unit, the 6G15 circuit. And it's hand wired, it's got a tube rectifier even, and, uh, and it's with a 6V6 power tube. I will try eventually the 6K6 to see what it's like. Since the guy who built this uh, used this beautiful old radio as the enclosure, uh, the placement and nature of the knobs are a little bit special. So I guess that makes me special too. This is the dwell. So basically this is on zero and then you crank it this way. The, the tone uh, knob or, or potentiometer maybe it's more correct in this case. The tone is the other way around. So you, you, cr you crank it this way and you roll back the treble that way. Yeah, and then we got the mixer, which is this little fellow here. So now it's cranked and now it's on zero. But let's get down to the settings. There's no time. But first, the mixer is the most interesting part to me. Because if you have it on zero, you will basically only hear the dry signal and you won't even hear much reverb. Even if you have the dwell on say 10, you will still hear very little reverb coming through. This is with a dwell on 10 and mixer on zero. You can still hear something leaking, but it's not really much. So if I would have like the dwell on five or three or something. Special. When it's set halfway, we basically have 50% dry and 50% wet signal. And it sounds something like this. But if you crank it to 10, you will only have the wet signal. Basically, you can only choose which one to favorize, if it's the wet or the dry signal. So if you're halfway and you choose to go either way, basically, you lose a little bit of either the dry or the wet signal. And then we have the dwell, which is basically just the amount of effect that we want to put in the wet signal. So with the mixer at about halfway, if I start from zero on the dwell and I roll it up to 10, this is what we get. get pretty harsh if we have both the mixer and the dwell cranked. I basically never do that. Then we have the tone potentiometer which is really very straightforward. So this is with all the high frequencies and if we roll it back we get this. So you get a lot less drip if you roll the treble back completely. Which is why we don't freaking do that. But you can do that if you're crazy. And now for some examples of settings. Allegedly Dick Dale used to have something like 4 on the dwell and then 7 on both the, the tone and the mixer. Which with my unit and through my amp sounds something like this. <laughs>
my opinion, if you have two guitars, like a rhythm guitar and a solo guitar, I think most of the times it's best to not have the exact same settings. For example, I might have a little less dwell but crank the mixer on the solo guitar and maybe have the rhythm guitar a little drier but with more dwell. And that would sound something like this. I don't think there are too many rules, these are just my preferences. And sometimes I just do something completely different. I mean, there are guitarists who like to crank the mixer to probably 10. I'm not sure about it, but Guitaracula of the Messer Chups uh, gives me that impression, but I might be wrong. <laughs> If you take like Ghost Wave, I think, by the verb tones, they have it sounds like they have the whole unit cranked or whatever. To me, it sounds something like this. I can't remember if they are palm muting it or not, but like the drip, you can hear the drip even if they're not palm muting it, I guess. Because you can hear it now. I'm not palm muting it to get the real drip, but you can still hear it because the unit is at max. It's crazy! Also, when I play, if I have the mixer cranked, I prefer playing on the lower notes more because it doesn't get so harsh. But if I, because if I do the same here, there's a risk that it gets a little bit too trebly. Of course, that also depends on the settings on your amp. Certain amps and certain uh, speakers are just gonna kill your, your hearing, basically, because they let through too much treble. And if I play chords uh, like this... Then I think it should be a little drier and not too wet, because otherwise it just gets messy in my in my opinion. But I'll tell you what, if I do something like this... Then I actually like having more of the wet signal. I could even crank the dwell a little more. Because it's not like present all the time, it's not doing... Because that tends to get a little bit too much, in my opinion. But hey, you do you. You can go and twang your own damn twang a rang a damn twang. And now for a little secret. If I disconnect the reverb pan, which is... I keep it on the, on the ground because I am terrible. Also if a burglar breaks in, I'll just crank the reverb in the amp at max and just kick the reverb pan, you know. That always works. Anyway, if I disconnect the reverb pan completely from the circuit, basically the tube unit is still processing your signal, but there's no reverb to get with a dwell. You can't get any reverb because there's no reverb pan, right? You get nothing. But it's not completely dry. If you want, you can have it completely dry, of course. But if you crank it to max uh, on the mixer knob, you get this. It 
basically smooths out all like the top top end frequencies and you you basically can hear what the mixer knob really does because it's It basically adds like warmth to the signal right now if I have it on max compared to and this is on the bridge pickup. You know, it's it's almost like some kind of like very warm and subtle overdrive. So the final results and sound that you get will vary and depends a lot on you know your setting and the amp you're using, the stage you're on, and the speaker. I can't stress that enough because I didn't know that. And now it's like the first thing I look at in an amp. Well, now I'm done. Subscribe and like so this channel can get crazy. Good. And uh, see you next time. And twangaranga, twangabanga I mean. Don't forget. Twangabanga.